Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about Side Effects Houdini, and that is because Houdini 19 was just released. Now I gotta admit straight out, Houdini is my white whale. This is a program that I've wanted to learn forever and just simply can't. I haven't dedicated enough time to fully grok how it works, but it is awesome in what it is capable of. And what it is, is kind of like a Max or a Maya or a Blender, but entirely procedural driven. So it makes itself really good for things like level creation, uh, special effects work, that kind of things. And this is used in tons and tons of movies and that kind of thing. But they're moving more and more into the game development world. In fact, they made uh, Houdini Engine, which is available for Unreal and Unity, uh, free earlier this year. So we're going to be checking out Houdini 19, what has changed. But first I'm gonna show you Houdini in action as well as my idiotic capabilities can show you, which is basically not at all, but you're gonna get an idea of how things work. So for example, let's say you wanted to create a world. I could come in here, do train effects, and I could create um, my base world. So I'm gonna go here, we're gonna create an island type world, boom. So go on ahead and created it. And like I said, everything is procedural. So everything is created as a network of nodes. So this island chain that we just created here, this, uh, this train right here, was created by this network of nodes. So you start with a height field, add some noise, distortion, uh, remap it, and do a couple other things, do erosion on it, set the water level, and you are good to go. And you can control at any one of these levels and change things, or we can do kind of at all of it. So here we got, uh, for example, noise algorithms were used to actually create this map. So what I could do, is changed, so say sparse convolution, I could do it to simplex noise, and we will get a completely different result. Everything here, all of the steps, you can basically come into any particular one of these. So let's say, for example, uh, we do some erosion right here. Uh, we can change the erosion rate, and this will result in, uh, I think, less, you know, either sharper corners or whatever. So you got control over all of the various different aspects. You see here, you got a ton of settings. And this is just one particular thing, but this is the key part to understand. Everything is a network of nodes. So I'll show you another really simple example. I'm gonna come in here, I'm going to create a box, put it somewhere in the world, and let's scale it up 100 times so we can actually see it relative to our um, our landscape in the background here. So we got our, our box here. Uh, you can control things with the uh, on-screen manipulators right here. You got rotation and handling and so on. You can also change things this way like so. Another neat thing you can do is actually do functions, Python functions directly into here like that, and it'll evaluate accordingly. Uh, so we've got our box there. Now you can do all kinds of, so here again is our box in the world. Now if you don't want to see it like this, uh, you do also have the ability to view things in like a tree view. Uh, so it, it doesn't have to be uh, in that approach, uh, but oops, I meant to, so you can see traditional tree view going on there. Uh, but I'm going to turn that off and we will stick to this approach. So we got our box right here. And now I'm gonna do is turn my box into a cloud. Pretty straightforward using one of the other systems in place here, uh, cloud effects, just drop in a cloud node uh, on the scene with our box selected, it'll automatically pick it. So now you see our box is populating a cloud. And so that's pretty cool. We can change, we can control anything in the settings uh, and change like the value. So for example, if I wanted to come in here, uh, we could change the scale of our box still, and you see the underlying, every, it cascades down the entire network there. So now what we can do is add other nodes into this network, this procedural network. So say we want to turn our cloud box into a set of stairs. Well, we've got a ton of nodes available. As you can see here, there are, uh, uh, here, I'll go to the all, you can get an idea. These are all of the operators available in Houdini. It's also why I haven't really mastered this program, because it just does things so completely different. But I can also come in and basically start typing, so I'm gonna do copy and transforms on our box. All right, so we've applied it, we created a new node in our network, and what I need to do is pass something into this. So I'm gonna do is take the box, and instead of going into the clouds, we'll go into the copy, and then that will go into the cloud. So now we have this copy operator available right here. We can pick the number of copies and what to do with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stagger these things off. So one and one, like so, so there you see, we've got a little, by the way, I can also use the mouse real time. So you see here, we staggered it off. And now we have multiple. Now I can come here and say, okay, let's make more of them. So you see how you can use these procedural approaches to make uh, levels easily, uh, instance things in the world. And again, we are seeing one, one node here, copy and transform. Again, there are all kinds of nodes. And when it comes down to uh, the systems here, you can sort of see from the tabs at the top. So we've already seen cloud effects and the train effects. We've got special effects stuff here for things like uh, torches, soft bodies, so on and so forth. Lots of simulation stuff in here. And that's kind of where this application really shines the most. Um, you've got full rigging and animation tools here. You've got things like vellum for animating uh, hair and cloth and so on. Rigid body supports, particle system supports, uh, 
the pyro effects for doing uh, fire and explosions, that kind of stuff. Oceans and fluid simulators, uh, crowd simulations, you name it, you've got it in here. So if you want to simulate massive systems and then you can create these complex node structures out of that, you, the sky's the limit on what you can do with Houdini once you actually figure out how to use it. All right, so on that covered, let us go take a look at what is new in Houdini 19. Now, they've been talking about Houdini uh, 19 for the last week now, but yesterday, I think, was the first day you could actually grab it. By the way, if you do want to grab it, you can come on in here. Uh, it's available in multiple different forms. So there is a free learning edition, which is called Houdini Apprentice. That's what you see here. Uh, you can only use it non-commercially, and it has a watermark on anything you render. Uh, plus, you can't export out to uh, the Houdini engine I was talking about earlier. So if you want to export and use this in a game, I think you're going to need, at the very least, Houdini um, Indie, uh, which is geared to your income for, um, well, I thought I saw $99 at one point here, but you can see there, $269, $399. And then you come on to um, Core, which is 2000 bucks. So this isn't, uh, by any definitions, the cheapest thing in the world. Again, Houdini Engine is also out there. And the cool thing is those are free. You can basically think of Houdini Engine kind of like a runtime for game engines uh, that support Houdini functionality. So you can take those simulations, bake them off, send them off to Houdini Engine, and recreate them in your game. It's very powerful stuff. But head on back over to the homepage. And we will see in terms of what is new, it's broken down by uh, basically the various different categories that are out there, plus a couple of general updates. So uh, as best as I can understand it, Solaris is um, their new USD support. USD is um, Universal Scene Descriptor. It's a new kind of universal format from Pixar. Uh, everybody's starting to support it. Unreal, Unity, uh, Blender's got um, some USD support, uh, Max Maya, everything. It's basically the, the new standard for interchange. Solaris is built around that. And then Karma is a new renderer that also works with Solaris. So if you're using moving to that whole USD approach, those guys are there. And then, of course, we've got... Um, Kin effects, this is uh, character animation movement, that kind of stuff. Uh, CFX, character effects, vellum, which again is for hair and cloth and so on, and pyro effects. Back to the overview, uh, what we got at this point is um, modeling, got some neat new features, curved bezier handles, which is, it's hard to believe that that took this long for them to, to actually add in. So, you know, um, bezier handles are basically these little guys right here. If you've used Adobe Illustrator or um, any other vector-based graphics application or any application, really. Uh, they probably have Bezier handles. For some reason, uh, Houdini hasn't until now. Uh, you've got curved rounded quarter support, uh, curved chain link support. Uh, they have got side effects labs, which is sort of like um, experimental add-ons you can put in there. Uh, that added poly slicing, topology transfer. So this is if you're doing like... Um, um, scanning of real world objects. So you can basically transfer it over easily. A new UV flatten tool makes it uh, easier, uh, cleaner, nicer UVs, uh, easily done. And the nice thing here from the UX perspective, uh, they've now got mouse looks. So you can actually walk around in your game like you were controlling um, it, it using a first person shooter type approach, which is definitely nice. And then the rest, they actually kind of broke down by uh, the category that it's in. Uh, this is a little bit into the weeds beyond what I want to do. Um, but you see here, they've got improvements to the scene import. So again, Solaris is a way of bringing uh, USD in. So they got a new uh, layout asset gallery for kind of instancing things. This is actually kind of cool. You see it in action right there. Um, so we got uh, a brush-based workflow, so it's, it's a new operator. Everything in here is a pop, chop, dot, drop, cop, pop, slop, whatever. Um, I don't remember what the first letter of all the operators stands for, but I think it's, well, I think in this case, it's literally layout operator. Uh, provides brush-based workflow for designing uh, rapid layouts of scenes. You see these in action. Watch these demos. You can, if you watch any of these videos, basically on this part specifically, you will see how Houdini is a pretty powerful tool for level creation. And you can also create your own custom brushes that you can turn paint with. So if you created your own thing that you kind of scattered flowers and bushes and rocks around the tree, you could then use that brush in another setup and quickly instantiate levels. You also got some new tools for uh, doing kind of basic uh, light matching for uh, integrating film and, and 3D work together. Um, so that's new in Solaris. Uh, Karma render, probably beyond what most of us want to, to deal with. Um, but they've got some improvements to it as well, including, um, oh yeah, I guess I should mention that, uh, Material X support. So Material X is to shaders as uh, USD is to scenes. So it's nice to see us moving to these uh, standards. So uh, on the KinFX, which is the animation tools, uh, KinFX includes robust skeleton blending 
uh, tools. You got new secondary motion tools. So um, you can have, like, you see it in the example of this particular dinosaur. Um, for doing things like the tail. So the tail wobbles as it moves around. Uh, that function, well, that's not a particularly great part of the thing to do, but to handle secondary motion like what you see right there, uh, that functionality was added in, got motion capture improvements there, uh, including uh, retargeting. Uh, so you can stream directly into kin effects so you can have your web camera and actually control it. Um, there's key pose extraction, so you can actually have a way lesser. So if you've got motion data coming in, uh, you can have it extract down to like, you know, uh, using a tenth of the keyframes and have nice, better performance going on. Uh, character effects got some improvements, including the new muscle system, where basically you can build up the model. Uh, it's kind of exactly as you would think you would build things. You build a skeleton first, then you put the um, the muscle and sinew underneath, and then the skin using uh, vellum for the skin, I believe, on the up level. So you can now create these these dynamic programmable muscles. Also have uh, improvements to groom their haircut tool, uh, which is actually kind of neat. So you can also brush it around physically, and you can see in the Karma render how that hair looks. And the answer is quite nice. So you got definitely some nice improvements on that regard. Uh, vellum, again, is sort of like that... Um, so they added fluids to Vellum. So it's a multi-solver for a wide range of visual effects. So this was mostly for cloth before. Um, Vellum brush already proved useful for pushing around hair. Now you can use it with fluids and grains. So uh, if you want to basically brush goop into your scene, you can do that right now. Uh, so definitely a lot of nice improvements there. And then pyro effects, um, special effects system for things like, uh, you know, fire and, and explosions and so on and so forth. Uh, definitely got some improvements there as well. Um, and then, yeah, that's about it. And as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Houdini Engine is also free for Unreal Engine and Unity developers. Uh, so it, this just makes Houdini in general that much more uh, important to the world of game development. It's a completely different way of working. Uh, you will get quickly overwhelmed when you come on in here. But I also find myself slowly picking it up. The more I use it, and then once you kind of get the, the grain of how things work, and then you start making some guesses, you'll find quite often your guesses are right. So you got no clue what you're doing at first. Uh, and then you start to say, oh, oh, that's how I do it. Whereas in you know, other tools, you may have done it with one button. Here, it might be 30. But then to, to do some complex stuff with it, you're like, oh my goodness, I can do this? That, that's amazing. So you find that is the nature of Houdini. Like as a modeling tool, character modeling tool, it's just, I, I couldn't imagine using this except for, for very specific things like uh, where you've got a lot of repetition or whatever. It's just not an intuitive modeling environment, for example. But when it comes to things like special effects, level creation, and so on, definitely a tool worth learning. And again, I am going to conquer my white whale one of these days and learn how to use this thing properly. But it's going to take a lot of time. So anyways, that is Houdini 19. I know I glossed over a number of the features because I know to many of you this is going to be a completely new software. So I didn't want to get down into the weeds. Obviously, um, Side effects software have been running kind of hands-on demonstrations of everything that are new in Houdini 19 if you want to learn more. Plus, I will link to the relevant ar um, articles down below. So that's it. Houdini 19. Ever used Houdini? What do you think? Am I just dumb for not being able to figure this one out? Let me know these things. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.